Okay, so I will be talking about new algorithms and hardness for incremental single source shortest paths in directed graphs. And this is joint work with Max Probst Gutenberg and Virginia Vasilevska Williams. So, first, what is the problem definition? So, we are interested in the problem of incremental directed single source shortest paths, where we're given a graph, a directed graph. And it's incremental because we are starting with no edges in the graph and one by one the edges are added to the graph. And our goal is to output the distance from a special vertex S to every other vertex following every single edge insertion. So the goal in general of dynamic algorithms is to be able to perform this update of the information faster than just computing the whole thing from scratch after every edge insertion. Okay, so what is known about this problem so far? So there's a classic result from 1981 um, called the ES tree by Ivan and Shailoach, which says that there's an order M times N time deterministic algorithm for this problem. And the time is measured in terms of total time. So that is to say from the point in time when the graph is empty to when all the edges are added. So if you want to think about it in terms of an amortized time, this would be order n amortized. Um, and it's also known that you can't do better than this time uh, if you believe the conjecture that all pair shortest paths does not have a truly subcubic time algorithm. And that's by Roditi and Zwick. So therefore, we turn our attention to approximation, specifically 1 plus epsilon approximation. So the goal is to get for every single vertex uh, a path of length uh, at most one times epsilon of the, the total path length from S to each vertex. Okay, so in 2014 was the next progress on this problem and they were able to break the M times N barrier. This was Forsten, Forst, Forster, Hensinger, and Nadokai. Uh, and their algorithm runs in time m times n to the 9 tenths, about, uh, and it gets a 1 plus epsilon approximation. But this algorithm is randomized, and it's against an oblivious adversary. And what an oblivious adversary means is that at the beginning of the algorithm, the adversary must decide on its uh, total sequence of edge insertions. That is to say, the adversary cannot make decisions based on the performance of the algorithm. So this is a pretty uh, restrictive assumption that we would like to be, and we would like to be able to have algorithms uh, that are not against an oblivious adversary. Uh, the contrast being either an adaptive adversary uh, for a randomized algorithm or a deterministic algorithm. So um, this is all that's known for this particular problem. Um, however, uh, the undirected case has been studied quite a lot. And um, there's been a pretty long line of work where the best algorithm is by the same three authors um, that gets a total time just a little bit over M. Uh, so that's just a little bit over, a uh, little bit super constant per edge insertion. So that's essentially optimal. However, the directed case was uh, very open. So what we show in this paper is uh, that you can get an n squared time deterministic 1 plus epsilon approximation algorithm. Uh, the O tilde signifies that we're, we are um, suppressing log factors. Uh, and the dependence on epsilon is just a sim sing single factor of 1 over epsilon. So this is the first improvement over, um, for deterministic algorithms over the ES tree. Uh, and additionally, it's essentially optimal uh, if your graph is dense. So, um, of course, if you're inserting n squared edges, you're going to take at least n squared time. And then this is a n squared times some log factors time algorithm. Uh, additionally, um, this algorithm is able to perform path reporting, meaning that after every edge update, it, it actually gives the set of all sort of paths that you found. Um, and this is interesting because um, even this is even an improvement for undirected graphs where 
uh, there was not a uh, path recording algorithm known that was better than the ES tree unless you can have an oblivious adversary. Okay, so today what we're going to focus on is uh, a warm up algorithm which gets time n to the 2 plus 2 thirds. So this is still better than m times n for dense enough graphs. Um, and uh, again, this is a 1 plus epsilon approximation algorithm. And this will, this will show some of the main ideas of our algorithm. So additionally, this paper also gives some conditional lower bounds for partially dynamic ST shortest pass problem, but I'm not going to be focusing on those in this talk. Okay. So first of all, um, let's talk a little bit about the ES tree. Um, this data structure um, has been modified and used in many different um, shortest path, dynamic shortest paths algorithms. And our algorithm is yet another modification of the ES tree. So in the ES tree, what we're doing is we have our vertex S and we're keeping track of the shortest paths tree from S. We're keeping our vertices in layers depending on how far they are from S. So let's suppose this is the tree. And additionally, of course, there will be other edges in the graph. So let's say these are the other edges in the graph. And then what's going to happen is the adversary is going to insert an edge. So uh, let's say the adversary inserts this edge. Because this edge is going backwards, it does not change the distances of any vertex from S. And so we can just do nothing. Um, however, if this edge is instead going in the opposite direction, we now need to modify some distances. So in particular, this green vertex here needs to get its uh, level moved down by one because now it's at distance two from S instead of at distance three. So what we're going to do is just move it down a level. And then this may set off a chain reaction. So we may need to also look at its out neighbors and then move these ones down a level as well. So this is how um, the ES tree works. Um, although there is some more bookkeeping and analysis needed to prove that it actually runs in the desired amount of time. So what our algorithm is, is going to be a lazy version of this ES tree. And there have also been other algorithms for dynamic shortest paths that also use other versions of a lazy ES tree. Um, however, the challenge with these types of problems is to figure out like the exact type of laziness that you want that best suits your problem. So um, I'll be presenting a, a version of a lazy ES tree, and it's actually uh, inspired by another uh, lazy ES tree by uh, Bernstein and Chechik. So their algorithm is for undirected graphs. So we're going to take a little detour and go into undirected graphs, and then we're going to come back to directed graphs later. So for undirected graphs, uh, what they did is they used this observation, which is an obvious observation, and it just says that any pair of vertices at distance at least three have disjoint neighborhoods. Otherwise, they'd be at distance two. And the reason this observation is useful because, is because it allows you to do the following thing. So it allows you to say, okay, let's look at a, an ST path, an ST shortest path, and it allows us to say that this path has few high degree vertices. And the reason for this is just because we can look at any pair of vertices on the path that has, has distance at least three, and there are lots of these, for example, these blue ones here, and we can look at the neighborhoods and say, okay, of course these neighborhoods have to be disjoint. And that just means that you can't have too many high degree vertices on a shortest path from S to T because many of their neighborhoods have to be disjoint from each other. And there can't be too many vertices, only N vertices in the graph. So why is this useful? This is useful because what their algorithm does is says, okay, we are now allowed to be lazy uh, specifically for high degree vertices. And because there aren't too many high degree vertices, this does not induce too much error. So what does it actually mean for a vertex to be lazy? 
So let's go back to our old ES tree. This time we're talking about undirected graphs. And we're supposing that this green edge has just been inserted. What we're going to do is move this green vertex down to its appropriate level. And if we were in a regular ES tree, we would also look at its out neighbors and say, not its out neighbors, its neighbors, and say, um, do we need to move these vertices down to a new level as well? Uh, however, if this vertex is being lazy right now, we're not going to do that. We're not, we're just going to move it down and not care about its neighbors, leave them where they are. And this will induce some added error. But the point is that any ST shortest path does not have too many high degree vertices. So if we're lazy only for the high degree vertices, we're not going to induce too much added error overall. Okay. So now let's go back to directed graphs. So we would like to have a similar observation to this one for directed graphs. So let's make this graph directed. And, but as you can see, this observation does not go through for directed graphs. So for example, you could very easily just have this edge and that would be completely fine. Um, that would not make the, this shortest path, uh, not invalidate the shortest path and, and um, it shows that you can have these two, vertices, these two blue vertices whose, whose uh, out neighborhoods are not disjoint. And so we cannot use, this is not useful anymore. So one of the main ideas of our paper is to figure out a version of this observation that is useful for directed graphs. So what is that observation? That observation is going to be the following. So here's what it's going to look like. We're going to say any pair of vertices that's at a sufficiently large distance is going to have disjoint forward neighborhoods. And a forward neighborhood of a vertex V is defined to be its out neighbors that are estimated to be farther from S than V. So for example, if we go back to our ES tree, and look at this green vertex, then those green edges correspond to the out neighborhood, whereas the gray edge that's going backwards is, sorry, the green edges correspond to the forward neighborhood, whereas the gray edge that's going back is not forward. Uh, and so if you, if we pretend that this is just a regular ES tree, then you'll notice that the forward neighborhood of a vertex can only go up one level. That is to say, this green edge is forbidden because uh, if this were there, then that vertex would actually have to decrease its level. However, because we're dealing with a lazy ES tree, we have some slack here. So we can say that um, these green edges, these forward edges actually can span multiple like levels. However, because the, we're going, to, we argue that because this approximation factor is um, not going to be too much, you cannot have uh, these green forward edges going, spanning too many levels. And from that statement, the observation follows directly. So from the statement that the green forward edges cannot span too many levels, we immediately get that any pair of vertices at a large enough diff distance have disjoint forward neighborhoods. And because of this, we can now get an analogous consequence and conclusion to what Bernstein and Chechik got, which is that any given ST shortest path has few uh, vertices of high forward degree. And then the conclusion is that uh, high forward degree vertices can afford to be lazy. So that's the motivation behind our algorithm, which is going to uh, take vertices of high forward degree and make them be lazy. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and describe um, this uh, algorithm. So this is going to be the n to the 2 plus 2 thirds time algorithm that's going to get a 1 plus epsilon approximation factor. Okay, so first what we're going to do is we're going to just use a regular ES tree for distances that are less than n to the 2 thirds. Uh, so one fact that I didn't tell you about ES trees is that 
uh, there's a thing called a truncated ES tree, which says that if you're only maintaining distances up to a distance D, then you can do this in time M times D. So if we're only maintaining an ES tree for distances less than N to the two, two thirds, then we get the desired runtime. So we only need to care about vertices uh, with distance more than this. Okay, so um, here's what we're going to do for the algorithm, which is going to take advantage of being lazy for vertices that have high forward degree. So when an insertion happens, uh, what we're going to do is just like a regular ES tree, we're going to decrease uh, this vertex V's level to just the one right above U's level if uh, that's necessary. Uh, and now the interesting part happens when we look at these forward neighbors. So what we're going to do is whenever a vertex V decreases its level, we're going to condition on it the size of its forward, forward neighborhood. So we say that a vertex is light if its forward neighborhood is less than n to the two thirds over epsilon vertices. Uh, and if our vertex that's moving down a level is light, what we're going to do is just do exactly what we did in the regular ES tree and update these forward neighbors, move them down to the correct level. On the other hand, if V is heavy, so it has a large forward uh, degree, then what we're going to do is uh, only, up, only scan V's forward neighbors and update them if V's level is a multiple of n to the one third. So what does this actually look like? So let's imagine this is what our uh, lazy ES tree looks like. We have a vertex S and, and the triangle just represents the tree. And then we have these specific uh, levels that are marked that, and, and those ones are the ones that are a multiple of n to the one third. So let's imagine that we have this vertex here that has high forward degree, so it's heavy. Now, if this vertex gets its level decreased, it's just gonna get its level decreased and it's not gonna do anything. It's not gonna update its uh, forward neighbors. However, once this vertex reaches one of these red lines, then we're gonna go ahead and update the level of all of its out neighbors, all of its forward neighbors. Okay. So there's a couple more bookkeeping. That's the main idea of the algorithm. There's a couple more bookkeeping things that we have to do. Um, number one, we have to keep track of the forward neighborhood of each vertex. Um, so uh, in particular, if a vertex V decreases its level, then it might have to leave the forward neighborhood of uh, one of its in neighbors. So what we're going to do to handle that is simply to update the forward neighborhood of these in neighbors, uh, but only if these level is a multiple of n to the one third. Okay, uh, there's one more bookkeeping thing we have to do, which is that uh, when a uh, vertices, of course, may change between light and heavy over time. And when this happens, uh, we're just going to go ahead and update all of the neighbors uh, of, of that and we're going to ensure that the threshold is such that this doesn't happen too often. Okay, so now I'll just walk you through the idea of the analysis here. So uh, first of all, what's the approximation factor? Uh, so it turns out that you can show that um, there are only at most epsilon times n to the one-third heavy vertices on any shortest ST path by, by the type of argument that we were talking about uh, before with the bernstein chechik idea. Um, additionally, you can show that uh, each one of these heavy vertices only induces additive error along the path of n to the one third. And so the total additive error along the path is just epsilon times n to the two thirds. And this is fine, but only because we're only considering long paths right now. So remember we for shorter paths that are less than n to the two thirds, we use a regular ES tree. And it's only for longer paths that we use this special data structure. So it's fine for us to have additive error of epsilon times n to the two thirds. Now for the running time. Um, so the idea is just that we're gonna uh, 
uh, handle the light and heavy vertices separately. So for the light vertices, we scan their forward neighborhood, which has size n to the two thirds of the epsilon, uh, once uh, per vertex per time it goes down a level. And so there, could, there are n vertices, n levels, and then n to the two thirds over epsilon uh, forward neighborhoods, for, forward neighbors. Uh, now for the heavy vertices, we may need to scan their forward neighborhood of size n and uh, we, we, but we only do this once per vertex uh, every n to the one third levels. And so this comes out to, again, uh, the correct running time. Okay, so that's the idea of the n to the two plus two thirds time algorithm. And now just to finish, I'm going to mention um, how we take these ideas and then turn them into an algorithm that runs in time n squared. Okay, so what we're gonna do is that there's gonna be two main changes. Um, first of all, instead of just having one of these lazy ES trees, we're gonna have log n of them. And we're gonna have log n of them because each one is gonna be specialized for a, a specific interval of distances. So the uh, the ES tree that you just saw was specialized for distances that were more than n to the two thirds. Um, but in the algorithm, we're going to have log n of them for each interval of distances. Additionally, uh, each one of these log n ES trees is going to have log n heaviness levels. So in the algorithm that you just saw, there was only light and heavy, whereas now we're going to have uh, log n different heaviness levels depending on the size of the forward neighborhood of each vertex. So um, one challenge in um, this algorithm is the fact that in the algorithm that you just saw, um, when a vertex goes between light and heavy, uh, it's trivial. You just can scan the whole neighborhood and then and that's fine. However, now we no longer have time to do this operation when a vertex changes heaviness levels. And so it turns out to be um, quite difficult to actually uh, um, handle vertices that are changing heaviness levels over time. Okay, that's all. Thank you.